So um, I want to begin by asking a question. And the question is, what is your God like? If I was to ask you a word or a phrase or what first word comes to mind, um, how would you describe your God? And if you have a pen and paper, it might be useful to write that down. So that's my first question. My second question is slightly harder, and that is, what is your God not like? So if I was to ask you, the God you don't believe in, how would you describe that God? Um, and again, just take a minute to think about it and to write down one or two answers, one or two words or phrases. When we're talking about image of God, one of the things to say is that it's not necessarily going to be a visual image. So some people do have a very visual sense of what God looks like or what Jesus looks like. And for other people, there's just nothing there. Like they can't imagine it in their sight. But you might be able to feel it or to have a sense of it. So it's partly just how you experience God. So when we're talking about image, we're not just talking about what you see. We're talking about what you feel. And one of the things to say then is no one image is going to be enough because no one image can capture God. Um, in that awful children's song that we all know the actions to, uh, he's wider than the universe and beyond your widest dreams. So you're never going to have a complete sense of what God is like. But we're given that something that's a finger hold or something that we can grasp that helps us to have a better sense. So if you look at scripture or you look at Christian history or you look at tradition, they are coming down with images. Uh, you might imagine God as father or mother or lover or creator. Um, there's lots and lots of images to choose from and no one of them is enough, but any one of them helps. So the idea is to explore what your image might be, not to judge it, but to give it a chance to notice what it means and whether it's useful, whether it's helpful for where you are right now. So thinking about it, where do your images of God come from? They're going to come from your life history. So if you think back to the various phases of your life, maybe primary school and secondary school, say whatever happened after that, whether you went to work or university, maybe some of the trials that have happened in your life, maybe some of the joys that have happened in your life, each of those is going to have some impact on how you imagine God at each of those stages in your life. So the God that you imagined when you were four was probably different than the God you imagined when you were 14. So think about your life history and how that's had an impact. One of the biggest impacts is your childhood. And your childhood is going to have had a huge influence on what you imagine God to be like. If you ask a child to draw a picture of God, the first thing that's likely to happen is they will draw a cloud and they will draw an old man with a beard and white hair and he will be white. And that's what they imagine God to be. Now most of us would say we've outgrown that image of God and yet again how often do we cast our eyes to set to heaven and say him above or the man above or whatever. The image is still around in us, we just don't necessarily give intellectual assent to it. Um, a lot of parents use God as a coercive partner. Um, so they will say to the child, uh, I won't see if you take a biscuit from the biscuit barrel, but God will see if you take a biscuit from the biscuit barrel. Um, and unfortunately, that stays with us until adulthood. And so in adulthood, we might be saying, you might feel like God is about to pounce out on you from behind the nearest wardrobe or cupboard uh, because you've done something very small but naughty. Um, there's a magnet that I saw in a retreat house a few years back and it said, Jesus is a silent listener to every conversation and the secret person in every meeting. A sneaky Jesus. Um, and frankly, I don't want to spend time with that Jesus. He doesn't sound like particularly good company. So, it may come from childhood. Some of your images are going to come from scripture. And whether that's as children and the passages that are given to you to read as a child or as an adult, there are, the scripture are dripping. Scriptures are dripping with images. Um, Jesus talks about God as a father who's longing for his son. He talks about God as a shepherd, God as a vine, 
God is bread, God is a vineyard owner, God is a farmer. And all of those images have something really rich to give us. And I'd also say it's really important to read your scripture discerningly because sometimes the image of God that's presented in a particular place relates to the author and the time that it was being written. So they have to be taken discerningly to understand what's actually being said. I'd also say try and engage with the whole of scripture. Um, Sometimes what Christians do is they have two or three or four proof texts and these are their favourite pieces of scripture which they will always go to and always quote. And they may be great and they may be really positive but the truth is they're lopsided because there's a lot more to the Bible than three or four or five verses. So there's something about let yourself engage with the whole of scripture and you will get a much richer sense of the images of God that are around. Some of our images come from church. So another question, what's your favourite hymn? And what's your church's favourite hymn? And again, take a note of it, because it's really interesting the way what we think God is like is communicated by the hymns that we sing. So some churches have lots of songs that are about me and Jesus. And some churches have lots of songs about a God beyond us. You know, God is watching us from a distance kind of stuff. Some have a lot of songs about social justice. Some have a lot of songs about community. And all of those are good, but they are all one particular way of understanding God. And it's very easy to forget that if you're singing something on a weekly basis, it's going to have a huge influence on how you feel about God, and how you experience God. So the classic hymn, immortal, invisible, God only wise, in light, inaccessible, hid from our eyes, that feels very different than a hymn that is the God who shouts in fury when the powerful shame the poor. It's a different sense of what God is like. And related to that, your image of God is going to be related to your culture and to your gender and to your sense of self. So is God male or female? Is God black or white? Is God rich or poor? Is God young or old? The American writer Anne Lamott, this is one of my favourite quotations, but she says that you can safely assume that you've created God in your own image when it turns out that God hates all the same people that you do. So although in Hebrew God doesn't have a gender, um, the Hebrew language has God beyond gender. In Europe, what we've tended to do is to make God white and male. And it's really interesting to start to ask yourself questions about what if that's not true? And if it's not true, what does that do to how I understand God? And the last pl place I think that we get images of God from is from God. And there's a uh, radical notion. Um, but actually sometimes in prayer or sometimes just in day-to-day -day life we have an experience of God that so moves us or touches us that nobody can take that from us. It has given us a sense of what God is like. God is capable of surprising us and God is capable of showing God's self to us in ways that we're not prepared for. Um, so there's something about being open to the sense that your image of God might come from God just getting involved and uh, letting you see something of what God is like. So thinking about all of that, um, how do you know what your image of God is? How do you work out what your own image of God might be? And the first thing I'd say is pay attention. So I asked you a question at the very beginning. What is your God like? Notice the words that you used and the words that you didn't use. And they're telling you something about what your image of God is, um, how you understand God. Um, another very traditional way to do it is to think about your senses. So we talked about the visual, but what does God smell like? What does God taste like? And what does God sound like? And what does God feel like? Uh, it's really helpful. Some of those questions make people kind of draw back a bit, what does God taste like? But scripture tells us some of that, so reflect on it. What does your God taste like? It's also worth noticing how you feel in God's company. 
Um, one of the things that amuses me when you lead groups in prayer is you say, let us pray. And it's as though the entire room adopts a brace position, as though they're expecting a plane crash, um, as though whatever they experience of God is going to be hugely traumatic. Um, so notice what posture you take in prayer, because that's going to tell you something about the God you think you're meeting. Uh, I have a spiritual hero who's a guy from the 16th century called Pierre Favre. And he really struggled with knowing when what he was experiencing was God and when it was something else. So he wrote some advice to himself. And he says, sometimes we are interiorly anguished. And though the Spirit may speak what is true, nevertheless, if it robs you of your tranquility, it is not the good Spirit. The Spirit of God is peaceful and gentle, even in reproof. And the experience of God if it's truly God, should lead you to hope. It should lead you towards a sense of possibility or energy or peace. And if your sense of God leaves you feeling diminished or hopeless or lost, then I suggest that's not a helpful image of God. Uh, one of the ways I think it's worth testing is what's God's tone of voice like? Because I think sometimes we have a, a sense that God is speaking in a, a needling, diminishing, critical way. And if you listen to that tone of voice, it's not usually the tone of voice that God speaks in. So notice the tone of voice or the message that you're hearing and then ask, is that how God speaks? Can I imagine Jesus taking that tone of voice? It's a useful test. I'd also say, that the God that you believe in up here is not necessarily the same as the God you believe in in your heart or in your gut. Um, it will it'll be different. Um, one experience I had myself a number of years ago, was, I, I was in a really painful place and I felt as though God was holding me at arm's length while he was occupying himself with things that were more important. And when I reflected on that, there was a sense that this was a God who didn't take me seriously. Now, I don't believe in a God who doesn't take us seriously, but my gut believed in a God who didn't take me seriously. So just notice that you might think that God is loving and kind, and yet at the same time, when you find yourself in trouble, you're not sure whether God's going to be on your side or not. It's worth noticing. And I'd also say, not all images are necessarily good or bad. So... For somebody whose father is good and kind and wise and encouraging, that as an image of God is going to be hugely helpful. You can pray to a God as father and that will feel good. If your father was absent or critical or abusive, then that's not going to be as useful an image for you. And there may be a different image that works better. There's something about realising too that your image of God is going to evolve at least we hope it's going to evolve. Imagine a human relationship and imagine the relationship a four-year-old would have with their mother. If that relationship was the same when the child was 40, then we'd, we'd have concerns, wouldn't we? And the same can be said of, of God. If you're still relating to God the same way you related to God when you were four, I'd suggest there's room for something to evolve or something to change. Your relationship with God grows up with you, um, like any relationship. Um, we don't stay static and God responds to who we are in that. The question I'd ask is not so much, is this a good image of God or a bad image of God? It's, is this a way in which God is revealing God's self to me today? Is this the way God wants to come to me today? And that's how you know if it's helpful, because you're learning more of God and you're growing yourself. And why does all of this matter? I mean, am I just wasting my time talking about this? Why does it matter that we know about image of God or think about image of God? I think it does matter. And I think it matters partly because it changes how we pray. If you believe in a God who is loving and is delighted to see you, then that will feel much, it'll feel much easier to come to that God in prayer. If you have a sense of God who is disappointed or disapproving, it's much less easy to be open and honest with that God in prayer. So there's something about how you imagine God is going to change how you pray. And as an image evolves, that will impact on how you 
choose to spend time with God. I think it's also important to discern because a positive image of God causes us to flourish. A positive image of God causes us to grow and to develop and to delight. A negative image of God diminishes us. It reduces us. It makes us less confident in ourselves. So I think it matters that we know which is going on so that we can identify what is positive and grow. Um, that's the desire, to grow towards God. The other thing is that an image of God is going to change how you feel about yourself. So if you believe that God is loving and kind, then that will help you feel more confident. A particular negative image of God, which is incredibly common, is the sense of a God who is disappointed. A disappointed parent, a parent who's been let down. And if you think about God that way, you'll start to think of yourself as a disappointment and you will be drained of um, drained of courage, I think. Drained of a sense of your own ability, self-confidence. Another one is if you believe that God is creator and you really spend time thinking of a God who is perpetually creating and perpetually at work in the universe. Well, the end result of that is that you are God's work of art. And if you can feel yourself to be God's work of art, that changes who you are in the world. Uh, it, it causes you to act differently. It's also going to change how you choose to spend your time. So if you believe in a God who cares passionately for people who are oppressed, then you can't help but join in. That's the call. That's, that's what enthuses you. So if you believe God cares about the oppressed, you will go and care about the oppressed. If your image of God is predominantly about fire and fury, then you're going to think that your job is to rescue people from the inferno. And that's going to change how you act. I think, um, we, I think God wants us to believe that God has a sense of humour and is open. And when we can believe that, we're much more comfortable in our own skin. If God is comfortable with us in our own skin, we can be comfortable with ourselves. If God accepts us, we can accept ourselves. And the last way I think it's important is whether you like it or not, uh, your image of God is shown to people around you. You are a carrier. You are a communicator. The kind of person you are will show other people the kind of God you believe in. And I often think people don't so much reject God, they reject the image of God that we communicate to them. Um, so it's about being careful about letting people see who God really is. And people will see beyond your words. People see who you are and people see what you believe in. And that is communicated to them one way or another. So let's say you're listening to all of this and you're thinking, I haven't really thought about this, but maybe I do have a negative image of God. Well, the first thing I'd say is congratulations, you're human. Um, all of us have some kind of negative image or experience of God rattling around in the background, generally which comes out to annoy us when we're low or things are difficult. It's going to be there one way or another. You'll hopefully have lots of positive images, but there might be some negative ones hanging around. And if that's the case, what are you going to do about it? How are you going to move? And I'd say to you, actually recognising it is the first step. So if you're actually able to, for example, notice the tone of voice that isn't helpful, if you can see that, then that changes how you respond to it. You're able to spot that it's not helpful before you start listening to it. Um, so that would be the first thing I'd say. Um, I'd also say ask God for help. Um, Jesus says that who of you, if you, uh, if your child asked for an egg, would give them a scorpion? Um, if you ask God for help, God is going to help. God wants to help. So you can trust in that. I'd say speak to somebody who you trust. It's incredible how just saying something out loud is going to change how you feel. It's, it's an incredible help just being able to say something out loud and realise that it's okay, it's normal, you're human. So find someone you can talk to, and that might be a, a friend who's very deeply committed. It might be a 
minister or somebody who leads your church. Um, it might be a spiritual director if you can hunt one out. Um, but finding someone who you can talk to about your faith is going to help and it's going to help you become better at spotting when negative images of God become troubling. Um, And I'm stuck with my pages. I'd also say pay attention to the way that you speak about God. Um, sometimes when you're praying, imagine that you're in church and there's somebody up front and they're praying in a particular way. Allow yourself to stop and say, do I really believe that's what God's like? So imagine someone is praying for good weather. Um, just ask yourself, is that what I think God is concerned about or not? Um, just pay attention to the way that God has talked about and ask yourself whether it's helpful or not. It's also possible that you may have a positive image of God, but it's unbalanced. So if you only ever think of God as Father, then you're missing out on God as Mother. If you only ever think about God as Judge, you're missing out on the God of Mercy. So there's something about, I sometimes suggest to people, allow yourself to experiment. You know, choose an image that you would never be comfortable with, that you would never normally pray with. A common one is God as lover. And allow yourself for a week to pray to a God who is a lover and loves you. And allow yourself just to experiment. It may not work for you. And it might be an absolute revelation. And you've lost nothing in trying. There's nothing wrong with being playful in prayer and choosing things that are not normally for you and just seeing how they make you feel. Um, so try one, just give, give it a go, give it a whirl, choose something random and see what happens. See if you discover something new. So in everything I've said, um, the most important thing I want to say is we have a God of love. We have a God who loves us and who is passionate about us and wants to be in relationship with us. God wants to be known. Uh, God wants to be experienced and there's something about allowing yourself to be open to that and the question is always to ask and the question I'll leave you with is in this very moment today wherever your life is right now how does God want to come to you today? <laughs>